Real quick video on the GEMDS Orbit platform. This is an unlicensed 1 watt 900 megahertz system. This is for your telemetry and your water, wastewater, industrial markets. Okay, I've got my access point. This particular unit also supports Wi-Fi, but we're not using it. I've got a 5 watt dummy load. I've got the storage forward, and it's just a 900 megahertz only. This unit has tinfoil over its antenna. It's uh, been reduced to a 22 dBm power from 30, and the tinfoil is just adding some interference to help kind of dial back that power for these other two units. A remote with another 5 watt dummy load. This unit is Wi-Fi capable as well. I'm not currently using it for this test. This remote is connected to my Dell computer, and the access point is connected to this Toshiba laptop. Let's set it up. Here's the access point, real quick and easy. Basic config, NX radio, we're configured for 500 kilobits. We've set our, our wireless network up as demo 900. It's configured as an access point. I've lowered the beacon to 50, uh, 150 I believe. We're using Hopset A um, and that's it. For the storage forward, we've got our same mode speed of 500 kilobits a second. We've got device mode of storage forward. We've got our network name. We lowered our power from the default 30 to 22 and we lowered the beacon interval from 150 to 15. So the remote's configuration is very similar to the access point. We used a lot of default uh, settings. Same modem mode, device mode is remote, network uh, name is in there, and that's pretty much it. Okay, so here's the access point. I'm running a Modbus simulator. I've got two pings also running at 50 uh, bytes each. So that's a little higher than usual. And I'm pinging the remote in the storage board. And then I've also got my GUI to my access point ready. Okay, so now the remote. You're going to see my mod pole on this side. You're going to see the data changing. I've got simulation running on the uh, AP, so those numbers are changing. Uh, you can see that we have 12 errors out of uh, 1,500 poles. And I've got more pings from the opposite end. I'm pinging my AP, and I'm pinging my storm forward as well. You're going to see i got Wireshark running. we got a nice little clear uh throughput here of traffic you see some some peaks we'll get into that and then i've got my interface to my remote uh, gui as well okay so we've got our access point talking modbus through the store and forward to the remote laptop to laptop now let's break it so our first test is going to be to remove the power off the store and forward and simply allow the access point and the remote to shift their paths to communicate directly to one another. Now this does mean we're going to have to actually move the remote closer to the AP just because those dummy loads are a little bit too strong not to. Okay, so here you have it. We've got the storm forward powered off and we've got our access point and our remote talking uh, as close as possible so there gets some connections. I mean, we're literally talking about milliamps at this point. All right, let's take a look. We still have traffic. Modbus is still pulling. Here's the remote. We can see here that our ping to our storm forward is no longer working, but our ping to our remote still is. If we look over on the GUI, we're gonna see where we have our routes, and we're gonna see that we only have one hop. So this is indicating that these units are talking directly to the AP. They're not going through anything. We can see our RSSI to the, the last RSSI to the unit. So it works. So our remote that was talking through the storm forward is now talking to the access point and we did nothing more than quote unquote remove it from the picture. So you may have noticed on the GUI I showed you that the storm forward, the dot 22 was still listed. So that was a, a probably a stale in the sense that it wasn't actually active but it was still in the table so now we're going to actually turn it back on so you can see here that that uh table i was referencing as being stale uh did update and it's no longer listed but our our uh, remote is still showing uh connected as one hop now we have gone ahead and turned that access point back on now something to watch for 
is that axis point is a lot stronger than those dummy loads, even as close as they are. So there's a good chance that it may actually, uh, I'm sorry, the remote may actually connect to the storm forward in its current position. Okay, so it's taken 10 minutes to get the storm forward back online. We come back to a VSWR error. My foil was missing. Right now, we've got our access point and our remote touching and we've got our storm forward online with an alarm but everything should be working let's check it out okay so i'm back at the access point we're talking everything's still working data's back flowing and again uh, if you look at the errors here we've had very little errors we started off with 12 uh, we've about doubled that since we now see that our remote and store and forward are back online. We can look down here to our routes and we're going to notice that again we've got one hop. So looks like the remote and the store and forward are actually talking independently. So that's actually pretty cool. So that means that uh, our remote did not switch. Okay, so again we've still got our remote talking to our access point really close we've got our storm forward online we have our led indicator blinking power suggesting there's an alarm let's clear that alarm real quick uh, we're going to notice on our page we've got an alarm icon that's red if we simply click on that it's going to take us to our current log where our alarm is showing and we're just going to go ahead and hit the clear button Okay, so we've got our access point communicating to our remote, talking through the two dummy loads. We've got our store and forward online, and our communications are going. Now, I did need to reboot uh, to re-show this video uh, because I don't have a cameraman. So we did have to restart our polling here. We've got a lot more errors, no big deal. You can see the gap in time. Traffic is flowing again. We're pinging, and we can also see here where we've got our remote and storm forward both associated, one hop, so they're both communicating directly. Uh, and now we're going to put the remote uh, on the far side of the storm forward to introduce no line of sight. RF in this room is uh, very sensitive. You can see my foil's gone. I'm going to go ahead and move the remote now. And again, we're going to put it on the far side here, uh, creating some distance from the access point. Okay, so we're at the access point. We're going to notice a couple things here. We now see our access point and store and forward with hops. So if you look under routes, you're going to see 33.22, that's our store and forward, and uh, .23 is our remote. We now see instead of where we used to have one hops, uh, for both, we have one hops for the store and forward, and we have two for the remote, which indicate that it has to bounce twice to get to the access point. So you're also going to see connected radios, and you're going to see number two under the store and forward. Each store and forward also acts as a remote, allows it to transmit data. So what's the application? You've got a tail end link that's really hard to get to. It's always losing comms. You've got a cluster of radios that just can never seem to stay connected. Take a few, make them a storm forward, and now you're getting those troubled remotes a second AP, a third AP to communicate to when they're having difficulty talking to the primary access point. It's clear to note that they will always try to talk through the AP when they can, but if they can't, they now have a redundant or a backup option so that's it uh, thanks for watching I hope uh, I hope you get some experience with the product um, you can find me on LinkedIn you can find me at Twitter and Instagram Facebook but you know I'm probably not gonna accept um, Philip dot Yancey on all of them so P H I L L I P dot Y A N C E Y thanks